I almost peed myself. They're like, you are absolutely arrested. I'm drunk. I'm just doing. I'm not the best. Love you, bitch. Just kidding, bitch. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Guys, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I've just really reinvented myself. I have an eggplant on my face. I'm an adult, so today we are going to be eating some adult food. We are going to be eating some Thai spicy ass food here on this side we've got a grilled shrimp super spicy papaya salad that he claims is not spicy but I paid for the Thai spicy version so who's lying <laughs> <laughs> and then here we have some spicy Thai fried chicken I think it's 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 weird because it's like covered in shallots I don't know I've never had oh, it before these are all shallots? yeah those are oh. shallots so I'm interested to try that wow. and then on this side we have Thai junkin noodles we've got a young coconut with coconut water we've got a Did spicy shrimp coconut? green curry yes she's young she's ripe she's juicy <laughs> and then here we have some fried shrimp balls with some sauces down here I got some rice down here and I guess let's just get started I've been craving Thai food for a hot minute I'm gonna start with this ball. Really? Right? Yeah. Okay, wait. Now you're I'm just so curious, this shrimp ball. Okay, we're gonna dip it in. You got the fish sauce over here. Is it fish sauce? Mm -mm. What mm. is this sauce? Why? Oh my god. <gasps> this Whoa. Is oh my god. So good. This is so good. Whoa. Why is it so juicy on the inside? Mm hmm. I wasn't expecting that. At all, whatsoever. Hold on. It almost kind of reminds me of like a fish ball mm -hmm. on the inside, but almost as if it's boiled, not fried on the inside, because it maintains so much juice. The That's outside better. is perfectly crisp and fried. Mind blown. The sauce is kind of sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh, I'll focus. Sorry. Okay, those are really good. Holy moly. I've never had that before. That was different. Okay, I'm gonna try the green curry because I feel like sometimes you have to compare like Thai restaurants to other Thai food you've had and I love green curry. It's my favorite part about Thai cuisine is green curry. It's my favorite dish, I mean, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna dunk mm. some rice in here. Wow, this is a big ass spoon. Wow, the noodles are so good too. Oh my god, the curry is amazing. Oh, it's spicy. It has a weird kick at the end. Holy yeah, we've been doing so good. Sorry, I'm obsessed with our Indian food that we had a couple- I'm sorry, do you have somewhere to be? I'm obsessed with the Indian food that we had a couple days ago, but this Thai curry is wow. amazing. this is so good. Mm. This is so good. Holy moly. Okay, I'm gonna go in for some papaya. It's so spicy. <coughs> wow. No, the papaya is not that- Spicy it's not though. That spicy. I wish it's more. What I enjoy is one of those you take one bite and you're just out. But then you crave more. Mm. Right? It's a little spicy. It's so good. Mm. But spicy. We have a friend who's. Well, you guys have met him a long time ago. He's half loud. Mm -hmm. And didn't you say his mom makes the best, the Lao version of Thai curry? Or Lao has like a their own papaya curry? Or not curry. What am I saying? <laughs> I'm drunk. I'm just kidding. Makes I'm not. the best. Hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so good. So we've been on like a four year search. I've never had it, but we've been on a four year search looking for that version of papaya salad. I feel like her mom just throws a, a ton of spice in there. Mm hmm. So what they do, like she will warm everyone. Like it's spicy, right? Mm-hmm. And then you take a bite, and then you just died. Really? And then everybody just have the best time because they just, you know, see you suffocating. It's funny. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you just laugh at everybody crying. So. Yeah. But everyone's crying or just a little bit? It was just me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how is the fried chicken? Mmm. Mm. It's different, but I don't know. It's not my favorite out of all. Okay, let's try this one. I do think the skin is very interesting though. Okay. Wow. Right? I don't understand this. Holy, this is- I feel is like this one is just a, just a bit of dry. Yeah, uh, yeah, and a bit greasy. 
No. Very intense. No. I feel like it's my least favorite out of all the dishes oh, so yeah. far. Everything else? It's like mind blowing. Holy cow. Yeah. 10 out of 10, I would eat again for dinner. Yeah. Oh my god. Today? Today? Yeah. <laughs> this <I> bit. <laughs> oh my god. It is so good. So today? Because the food is so good. Because the food is so fun and fresh. I decided to smack us in the face with some creepy ass stories. This is not a scary showdown because I will absolutely tell you the most scary stories that you won't even be able to talk. You won't even be able to tell your story because when I read about these stories, I almost peed myself. Now, this could be because in conjunction of me reading about these stories, I had this whole drama with like a light in my bathroom <laughs> on my other channel. If you guys didn't know, my light, my room mirror is haunted. My bathroom mirror, it's it's a whole complex thing. And so I don't know if that made it extra scary, but I do think that these are very, very intense. So the first one starts with a man who had a job a long, long time ago. Let's call this guy by the name of Andy. Andy, that's very random. Wow. Mm. Have you tried the coconut juice? Mm -mm. The young coconut juice? How young though? As young as me. Not that young. <laughs> <laughs> Seasoned coconut juice. No! Yeah, let's try this. Okay. You wanna eat that whole thing? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my god, it's so fresh. So fresh. <laughs> also, this is a grass straw, by the way. Just putting that out there. And so today, we're gonna be talking about Andy. Now, Andy used to work for like a, a photo developing company long, long time ago. I, you just dropped up a jillion vegetables. Andy used to work at a photo developing company many, many, many years ago when that was like the biggest thing. When there wasn't iPhones, when there wasn't people taking digital cameras, they would have to literally take a disposable camera, take pictures on it, bring it to CVS, bring it to Rite Aid, get it developed, and then pick it up at a later date. Waiting line. Yeah, and now it's like the new thing again is like film pictures but back in the day that was the only type of pictures so they were very busy they were full of business and a ton of people came wait didn't we share a story like this or at least I think I did or maybe I only read it but there was this guy who posted on um like a I think it was Tifu, today I messed up, right, pretty much. It's a subreddit on Reddit, and it was pretty much saying that, like, when he was younger, like, maybe, like, 10, mm -hmm. he had this disposable camera that his family had, and he thought it would be funny to take a picture of him, a bunneke, his butt. He wanted to take a picture of his butt, mm. and he was bunneke in the mirror. Mm. And then um, he later grew up and found an attic in his old family house where there was a bunch of disposable cameras. And so mm. he thought, hey, why not get the film developed? You never know what kind of family memories we got in there. Mm. He got it developed and then he went back to pick it up and the cops were there. And then he had to very uncomfortably explain to them, no, that's actually me and mm -hmm. not um, a child that he's holding hostage in his attic. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. 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 That is weird. That gets me really scared. Like real story? Mm-hmm. Mm. So the film per person, the worker called the pop. Yeah. Oh. But then he had to explain, I took that picture like 20 years ago when I was 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know? You see that mole on the left? Left cheek? Yeah. I'll show you right now. <laughs> now look at here. Look here. <laughs> They're like, you are absolutely arrested. <laughs> Disturbing the peace. <clears throat> Do you have any birthmarks? <laughs> Now what's interesting about him is that he says that it's a very interesting job. He loves the job of like developing pictures. He's always been passionate about it, but something about it is just inherently creepy because you're in this dark room developing these film photos, mm -hmm. but at the same time you see this very inner look at just a very intimate look at people's lives. You almost feel like you're a peeping Tom. The people want you to develop the pictures, but for some reason you can't help but feel just a little strange. Yeah. Now he said typically people know that the photos are gonna get developed, so there's nothing too, too crazy in there. Randomly there will be like a couple shots or two that are a little bit out of the ordinary, but usually it's just a bunch of family pictures, especially on vacation. Now, 
<laughs> Couple months into it, he gets a picture. A man drops it off. Uh huh. And he's developing the photos when he sees something that catches his eye. Now it's just one photo out of the whole entire roll. It's the family out on what seems to be like a camping trip, a vacation. And it's in the woods. There's like a family of five. They're all standing there. Mm -hmm. And in the background behind a tree, he sees a man in a hoodie and a hat watching them. What? And it's very creepy to him because it doesn't seem like this is just somebody who photobombed because he said back in the day, photobombs happen all the time, right? You can't just like facetune somebody out of your picture. And so he was like, okay, it's, it doesn't seem like a photobomb because he's seen so many that this just doesn't feel like it. It almost seems like he's looking at the, like the people either in the photo or the ones taking the photo. And mm -hmm. so it seems very stalkery and he's wearing like this dark hoodie with this black cap. And so he's like, okay, this is a little strange. And so he develops the pictures and and when they come to pick it up, he doesn't mention anything because he doesn't want to alarm them. And also, what if it was a family member who's just shy and doesn't like taking pictures? And he was like, I don't want to be rude and make it seem like I'm studying their pictures. And so he doesn't say anything. Now fast forward to maybe three weeks later, he gets a completely different family. They come in and they get their film developed. But this time, it's not the same place. Oh. It's a very different place. Now these families look like they have nothing similar, nothing alike. It wasn't the same camping grounds. It doesn't even seem like the families know each other. And because what happens when you develop film is you leave your contact information obviously just in mm -hmm. case and he looked it up and he remembered that the first people he just remembered their names because it was such a weird creepy thing it stood in his memory mm -hmm. and he looked the other people up that just turned in this film and it was not the same family This is so good. Even this papaya salad, amazing. Wow, so fresh. Damn, these are so good. I know, I don't understand how they did this. Like, have talent. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's so much nice herb and flavor mm -hmm. in these. Now this time, the family picture was taken indoors, and by all means, he doesn't see any similar people, so it doesn't seem like they're all friends with the last people that had their films developed. And so he sees this picture, and it looks like a little girl's birthday party. So everybody's yeah. inside of the family room with a cake in the middle of the coffee table, and everyone's singing happy birthday, and everyone's posing like this. Now it's the middle of the day, because, I mean, it's a little girl's birthday party, and the person taking the picture had, I don't know if they saw it, that's what he was saying, like he doesn't know if they saw this happen, but there was a man in front of of the window of this home. Now here's the creepy thing. This home seemed like a single family home because through the window you could see other single family homes. And so that means someone went onto your lawn, onto your property, and peered into your window. It wasn't like it was an apartment complex and they were walking by and they just saw something. So it doesn't seem like there's a sidewalk right there. It just, it was very, very creepy. And then he looked closer and he realized this. I think that's the, the same, same guy. Mm -hmm. He's wearing the same hoodie, the same cap, but what's creepy about this one is he for sure is up to no good because he's staring. It's almost like he's watching this family like they're in a zoo. Like he's not just peering in. He's not trying to like, he's not like that sad, lonely person that's like, I wish I had a family. I wish I had a birthday, you know? And nobody noticed him. Nobody noticed. I, I mean, he doesn't know if the cameraman noticed, but it just was very creepy. It was like he was studying everybody in there, like literally a zoo. And so he gets incredibly creeped out. He again, mm -hmm doesn't say anything to the people that pick up the picture, but he just thought it was very strange. Now, here's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. He says because he developed so many photos, he understands when a photo is a family prank. So usually they're really, really awkward. Usually, like, they can do family pranks like this, where it's everybody's inside and one person's outside looking all somber, like, I wish I could join the party. That's like a family prank photo. But he said it's nothing like that. Like, this person is not part of the family. And okay. so he just returns the photos and doesn't think about it. He tries to forget about it. Well, I mean, the person who, the family who got it probably noticed it mm -hmm. later though.
don't let the dogs out. Here. Because I got papaya salad all down here. And it is spicy. <laughs> You don't think they will like Thai food? Mm -mm. Well, I think they'll love it, but I don't think their stomachs can handle it. <laughs> I think they can handle some Thai curry. Mm -mm. Spicy. No way. Well, mango is a, has a pr pretty good, um, what is it? She likes to try new things and... She likes to try to eat Every leaf outside, mm -hmm. every squirrel is a new meal for her. And so he tries to forget about it. Now a month later, he gets another person that comes in with a photo roll. He develops the photos and this time it was at a pool party. And at the end, one of those pictures, he sees a guy behind the fence at this pool party looking in and it's the same dude and he's just staring. And so all of a sudden he's like, okay, I can't just forget about this. He looks up all three names. They're not related. It doesn't seem like they're, you know, sister, brother, mom, dad. Like it doesn't seem like it's the same family and this guy is part of the family or just a creeper that's stalking the family. Something about this was weird. And so he starts thinking, maybe it's like a serial stalker, right? Like maybe it's a peeping Tom in the neighborhood. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I should go to the police. I don't know what the laws are for me being a photo developer and then saying like giving out these people's information and telling the police about it. Like he's thinking about all of these things. And mm -hmm. it's about time to be closing. Now the people, the family who had the pool party thing, they didn't pick up the film that day, but someone came in right before closing time and he turns around and says, okay, I need to focus, get the last customer out and do the closing. Turns around and says, how can I, how can I help you? you and know? it was the guy, the same guy. Oh boy. With that very creepy, observant face, staring at him across the counter. And he freezes and he goes, how can I help you? And he goes, I just want to develop some pictures. And he gives him a roll. And he takes the roll and goes, oh, okay. Um, Oh, shit. Act normal. So how's 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 your day? Um, here, let me get the form for you. Uh, how's your day going? And the guy goes, oh, it's been good. It's been good. The photo developer looks at the peeping Tom guy and goes, oh, you look kind of familiar. Have you? Do you stop by a lot? Do you develop your pictures a lot here? Because I think he was trying to gather information for the police. Mm -hmm. See if he lives in the area, you know, what's his job? And he goes, oh, it might have been because you've seen me in the papers. And he goes, in the, in the papers? Why would I why would I see you in the papers? Why why would you be yeah, in the papers? Kind of and he goes, Oh, well recently you didn't hear there was a serial stalker. And he goes, Oh, I I had no idea. What what do you a serial stalker? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, and he goes, Yeah. It turns out that this serial stalker was killing everyone that he stalked. The guy in the hoodie says it's the strangest thing though. Uh-huh because he loves pictures. And the photo developer is standing there shaking, about to pee himself, and he goes, is that so? And he goes, yeah. It's so creepy because he would take pictures of all of his victims before he killed them. And then he said, is that so? And then the guy goes, yeah, I've even seen him do it before. And the photo developer goes, you've seen him do it before? How? Come to find out uh -huh. that the guy in uh -huh. all of those pictures was a police officer that was stalking the serial stalker and he was caught in all of those photos uh -huh. and so then he turns in his picture and he goes yeah i mean i'm just glad that i'm no longer undercover and i can just do regular errands like getting my pictures developed for my wife and then he leaves and the uh -huh. photo developer he closes up shop and he can't help but think that sometimes you think that a picture is a thousand words but the most mysterious part is the person who's taking the picture so he's suspicious about the, the cop? No, because the cop was in the pictures and he thought the cop was the serial stalker. Right. But it's creepier that the serial stalker was the one taking pictures. But they, they, those pictures came from three different families. Yeah, their families were killed and then they turned in the films. Like the other family members turned in the films to get it developed. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's creepy because you always think that like, I'm so scared that in my picture I'm gonna see like a paranormal activity, like mm -hmm. a ghost, or I'm gonna see like a stalker looking through the window. But then sometimes maybe it's the person taking the picture. Like imagine you go traveling and you're like, oh, could you take a picture of us? And you give them your phone and they take a picture of you and that ends up being the person that kills you. 
The cop witnessed three families got killed and <laughs> didn't do it. Yeah. Didn't catch the guy. Come okay, on. that's your moral of the story. Yeah. Hey, cop, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, but also, that's really creepy. But do you guys tell people or do you guys ask people to take pictures of you? And how do you choose? Like, if you go to a new place and you've got friends of like five people, now you want all of your five friends to be in the picture in front of like, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, how do you decide who to ask? Oh man, don't ask people near Eiffel Tower. <laughs> don't ask the people with the freaking ball and cup because we got scammed out of a hundred euros. Honestly, our fault for being so dumb, but we got scammed out of a hundred euros and I vlogged it and later we got back to the hotel and watched the vlog footage and it was like one of those trick of the eye scams. And I was like, damn it. And the people who's like all the actors. Yeah, and they have actors in the crowd. Honestly, it Literally, was a whole ass business. We're like... That's probably the one of the top three dumbest moment of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Top but, one for me, top <laughs> ten for you. But you know what? I wasn't even mad though. He was genuinely <laughs> mad, but I felt like, listen, if I fell for it, they deserved it. Not that they deserve the money. You but like, deserve it. But I deserve that I got scammed out of it, you know? Like, I couldn't even get That's upset. Crazy. It was like, I did that to myself. It wasn't like one of those unfair scams, you know? But how do you decide? Because I've heard of so many people who ask people to take pictures for them, and they just run with your phone. I usually ask, like, parents. Like, if I see that they're with a kid. Okay, that's a good one. And a wife, you know? Or like a husband. How'd you even know their husband or wife? Or a mistress. Damn. But if they're with a kid, usually I'm like, okay, this feels comfortable. They're not going to leave the kid for an iPhone. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> These things, iPhones are getting wildly expensive, so. <laughs> iPhones are getting really annoying. <laughs> Look at TikTok. <laughs> Bitch, I'm on TikTok. Rude. The next one's creepy because this one is one of those things where have you ever experienced when something that you set up for your safety ends up being the thing that's creepy? I'm really paranoid about home invasions. Now, I'm not even scared and paranoid because like I'm a YouTuber and like people are gonna stalk me. I don't think that at all. Like I'm mainly just afraid of just basic random home invasions or burglaries that happen. So it has nothing to do with like, I just like put my life out there. It's just, it's like a big fear of mine. And so I like the comfort of like apartment because you have like security and video cameras in the hallways and you have so many units and stuff that you could just run out your door and your neighbor's door is like right there to knock on whereas mm -hmm. like when you live in like a single family it's like it's gated then your neighbor's place is gated and you're gonna run it's just the whole thing and so I decided that we were gonna like we got a place with security cameras I wanted to add extra security measures and then I was thinking like what if because I got a lot of DMs of like what if one day it's not even a home invasion and you're trying to protect yourself against a home invasion, but you watch your security cameras one day and it's like a paranormal activity With type of gun. situation. Like you see ghosts instead, mm. you know? So it's like you do something to prevent yourself from getting scared that it in turn scares you even more. <laughs> it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the in heart. My green suit. <laughs> <laughs> in your green suit. <laughs> walking around in your green suit and like my sister is like you don't think it's weird that like if everyone's hanging out in like the living room or the hallway like it's like inside of your house i guess most people just put it on the outside and i was like i don't think it's weird right I people install all those cameras for the baby for pets for a yeah. family mm -hmm. i thought really so common. too no? for their husbands i guess for their pets same thing i'm just kidding i'm just kidding love you bitch just kidding bitch they were like sending me these dms and people keep asking me you don't think it's weird you don't think it's creepy now let me tell you about this new thing that i read and this i don't believe to be a true story four bell cameras yes. are incredibly popular mm -hmm. now there's this one girl and she was writing this story and she said you know i'm very very paranoid as a person i'm very scared of the outside world i really like to stay at home and i'm so extreme to the point where if i'm home alone she lives alone if i have no friends over and i want to order a pizza i will literally go through the doorbell and tell them leave it at the door right mm -hmm. because she can actually communicate through the doorbell mm -hmm. and so she'll beep on her phone and say leave it at the door and the pizza guy will leave it at the door and she'll go check under the mat mm -hmm. and he'll open the mat and there's a tip so mm -hmm. she sets it up in advance because she just doesn't like the idea of opening the door and no. someone who can physically overpower her being standing right there right because mm -hmm. it's so easy to push in the door once it's open yeah. and so she's like I'm not having none of it so she loves this doorbell camera you know it's pretty affordable she had someone install it for free from the security company so 
she's like, I got a good deal. And so then one day, she hears a little noise, right? Mm -hmm. And she doesn't think it's a big deal. And so she's yeah. just laying in bed watching TV, and she hears this noise. Now, she clicks on her phone because it's connected to the doorbell, so she wants to see what's going on in the front of the house. And she connects it, and she gets that buffering noise, or that little oh, circle of hell. And so she's like, oh, it's buffering. And so she waits, and she waits, and it's still buffering. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that's so weird. And then she goes and kind of looks out her bedroom door, and she can't see the front door that well. So she's like, I still hear this really weird noise. Mm -hmm. And so she keeps unconnecting it, reconnecting it, and she clicks it again, and it's buffering. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like it's, she sees it through the doorbell, and it's completely empty. Her front entryway is empty. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, she sees a guy in a masked hoodie, right? And all you can see is like a little bit of his mouth, and he has this little screwdriver, and he's doing this to the doorbell. And so she gets really I thought creeped she saw out. It, empty. it it lagged. Oh. So it almost was like it jumped up, you know, because like when, sometimes it lags and sometimes it doesn't show you the process. Mm. So it looked like he had run up and was just doing this, mm -hmm. but to her it just all of a sudden he appeared. And so he's going like this to the doorbell and so she's freaking out. And so she connects it. It's connected by Bluetooth, right? Mm -hmm. And so she connects it and she goes in her scariest voice that she can make. She goes, I'm about to call the cops right now. You better leave. This doorbell is recording everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And this person kind of smiles a little. Mm. And she goes, why are they smiling? And then she goes, okay, you're right. I have to be more aggressive. And she goes, get the off my property but she said she was so scared the way that she said it was it wasn't get the fuck off my property it was get the fuck off my property like almost nervous and frantic and the person again smiles mm. that's all she sees is a smile and she goes that's it I'm, I'm calling the cops and then all of a sudden her doorbell camera goes blank oh my and she can't talk to them she can't see anything mm -hmm. And so she slowly makes her way out of the bedroom. She calls the cops. She has 911 and she's about to say, hello, my address is. When all of a sudden, somehow, her phone went dead. Whoa, no because way. Because it's connected by Bluetooth. And so if you're really smart, anything could be hacked, you know? And so she goes, holy shit. It's not like they can open the door. It's not like that there's a code. But now she doesn't have a landline. That's it. Like all she had was her phone and her phone won't make the call to 911. Mm -hmm. And so she starts freaking out. And so then she screams out the window. Like I said, I'm on the phone with the cops right now, right now. And then all of a sudden she hears frantic jangling of her front door. And so she freaks out. She grabs her phone. She grabs whatever she can, runs out the back and she runs and runs and runs. runs. where? She left the house? Yeah, she left the house. Oh, okay. Now she's running in the back of the neighborhood and then she looks behind her and someone's following her. It's the guy that was jamming her doorbell camera. And so she keeps running and she finally, because it was late at night, even if she knocks on a door, they're not going to get to the door in time because they're probably sleeping. What if they don't even hear it? What if they're not home and that person is going to snatch her? And so she finally sees through somebody's house, it looks looks like the living room TV is on and she goes perfect that's close to the front door right and so she runs to their front door and the guy is like two houses down and she starts banging on the door please help me help me help me and then all of a sudden she hears the same doorbell camera and someone goes get the fuck off my property and they wouldn't open the door was that her voice no oh somebody else yeah who's scared yeah and she turned around and it was the guy who installed the doorbell we installed the doorbell camera. That's we don't know if she's dead. Damn. I'm not gonna make a prediction. Yeah, she did. <laughs> no, no. You can give her a happier ending. Oh, he said, would you like to go on a date with me? No, he said, I just want to sell you this new upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I just joined a new company <laughs> and I would just like to sell you the better version of it. Uh, I saw that your doorbell camera was broken. <laughs> this is weird. You can sign up here, $39.99 a month. You are the lamest. And she said no. The, I'm. This is gonna and make me sound. Was killed. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna make me sound absolutely nuts. But I read about so many of these. Did you know one of the biggest serial killers, BTK, which stand for um, mm -hmm. Bind, Torture, okay. and Kill? He actually worked for a security alarm company, a big one. And he broke into people's houses because he set up their security system. And he mm. knew what their house looked like, their layout, what the security they had, mm. who lived in the house. 
And so that's why we have two different companies because we're like, bits, not today. One goes off, the other one's like, bits, who that? Unless they're tag teaming and they work together. <laughs> then that's really unfortunate. But is that not so creepy? That's very creepy. That's like the main reason that I was like, never rely on one company, especially for security. I read somewhere, first of all, I heard that home invasions are one of people's top fears, not because like, it's it's not even like the most common thing that happens, but mm -hmm. it's people's top fear because like your home is your safe space. So you don't, you don't, you're thinking about not even like the valuables that you lose, but you're thinking about, okay, how do I feel safe afterwards? And even if you move, you have this traumatizing experience inside of a home home yeah. that you lived in and then I was telling this to my um my hairdresser because she was talking about how she's gonna move into a house and she's like looking into security systems and then I was like oh yeah like that was me too because I'm so paranoid of home invasions and she's like me too and then she goes you know what I think I think if you have a crazy unexplainable paranoia she believes that if you have like a crazy paranoia that you've never experienced before that's not something that you're born with like let's say fear of heights is something babies are born with she mm -hmm. says if it's one of these like really random things like some people are really scared of getting mugged like at gunpoint some people are like but not just the regular scared what about spider no what like it's mean, like though? a like a like a crime usually I think Spiders she was referring to. <laughs> they are not criminals. <laughs> so she's saying if some people are more scared of getting mugged at gunpoint in the dark alleyway versus being scared of a home invasion, she believes if you have an unprecedented level of fear versus all of your other peers, that you've experienced that in a past life. Oh my goodness. And so you don't know why you're so scared of this. And logically, you look at the statistics because we were both like, hey, like, listen, we don't live in like very, very like scary areas where it could be more and more common, right? So why would we have this fear? It could just be a movie you watched growing up. A you think documentary so? Documentary. So she was watch. like, I think that you probably experienced something in the past life. So then later on, you're just like, you don't know why, but something about it. You have like this connection to this crime. That gives you like that emotional intense fear. So some people are like very scared of like getting into like a car accident on a highway. Like my aunt, she refuses to get on a highway. And I'm like, what's the biggest fear? And she's like, there's so many accidents happen on the highway. And I think statistically, I feel like more accidents happen locally. Am I crazy? Do you guys believe me? Let me know in the comments. I mean, this is not something that I absolutely believe until the day I die. It's not going to be like my number one belief, but like it makes so much sense. You don't think so? <laughs> it makes so much sense. Facts. Facts. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty creepy. The dude's just trying to sell some upgrades. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's gonna be it for today's video. I have to go install five more doorbell cameras. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!